honest with you. I didn't know whether I was going to do this within the normal vlog or as a separate thing. And I thought, you know what? This needs to be a separate thing because it's going to tell the story of um, the huge increase in we're seeing in costs just for living on the water and how we got here because I know there's going to be some flippant amongst those out there who are just going to say, well, if it's too expensive, why don't you just move? It's not as simple as that, is it? So we're going to, this might be a good one for people who didn't follow our old channel, Hand of the Narrowboat, and don't really know how me and Lee and the Mighty Hound got to this point where we are. So we'll start back. We bought our boat in 2011. Well, actually, that's a little bit of a lie because my mum actually bought us the boat. Now, the reason being is that I was running a business at the time called Trail World and it was eating money. And I was, my mum had allowed me to have some of my um, inheritance money to help the company to buy things like dirt bikes and stuff like this. Trail World, for those, well, you won't know what it is. It's an off-road motorcycle company. Um, who do experience days. We had a centre in Mark Yate in Hertfordshire and we also had centres in Spain, two centres in Spain, one in Compita and one in Villanueva del Trabuco. And that particular company was actually called Andalusian Trail, uh, Trail Tours. But then the whole thing eventually came under Trail World. And what my mum didn't want to happen was for all the money to go into business because she, mums are wise, so she could probably see what was going on. And she said, right, Here's a certain amount of money. This must be spent on you and Lee and not the business. Basically, I believe she could see the stress that was happening. So that's, that's kind of the story of how we ended up um, buying Hannah the narrowboat. Now, when we bought Hannah, we were going to go to Billing because that's where we used to have a Freeman 22 called Spindrift. And we brought up the kids on that and it was fantastic. We thought, well, it'd be nice there because then, you know, our kids are now growing up and when they have kids, well, they have now grandchildren, they could come and um, visit us up there and it'd be a nice place for them. But somehow we ended up at Gate Marina and we ended up on this fabulous mooring. We're very lucky. This is, you know, one of the big pluses and one of the reasons it's um, worth putting up with the increases because of the specific mooring spot we've got. We're very lucky to have the garden, the North Adventure. Now it's not ours, but we're looking out onto grass at least, whereas a lot of other people are between boats. I'm not sure I could cope with that. So yeah, so that's how we ended up at Gayton. Um, and we, we stayed here. So in 2018, we decided we wanted to move aboard Hannah. And it was nothing to do with financial reasons. Um, because I'd offloaded Trail World and kind of got myself back on my feet, things weren't too badly. I had a salon, hair salon. I had my design company. And uh, we just wanted to do it before we were too old to move out of the house, move on a boat and not be able to go the other, back the other way if we didn't like it. Does that make sense? So yeah, so we made that decision, thought, bugger it, we'll just go for it. And also our daughter had the house we were renting. So that was handy because she, she was pregnant. So that's all good. So then we had COVID, okay, which... For those who watch this channel, they know exactly what I think about it. I think it's the biggest crime against humanity in history, apart from perhaps the world wars. But it could turn out to be bigger. Now that's my opinion, of course, and that's not for this vlog, but I will do a special vlog on that one. It destroyed me and Lee. I had risked, because I'd recently gone self-employed again, um, I got absolutely no help. I didn't get furlough, didn't get any of that shit, nor did Lee. Um, she tried to keep the salon going and of course it went. And every penny we had saved up or any bits and bobs we had about, we lost it all because we had to, still had to live, remember? As I say, we had no help. So for a couple of years, we were eating into any money we had. So that left us with nothing, to be quite honest with you. Now, if you watched a fairly recent video, I spoke about how much the um, license fees are going up. And basically what it's doing, it's going up 5% above inflation for the next four or five years for me. 
and the continuous cruisers, it will go up even more, which is, I think, it's outrageous. But I had a couple of comments saying, well, they don't dictate how much the marina charges. Well, actually, you're wrong. They do. The water still belongs to CRT. There's only one or two or three marinas around the country that you don't need a license, a boat license, to actually stay on their marinas. So we still legally, even if we didn't leave the marina, we still legally have to pay our license fee. So that's how I understand it anyway. So we've been bombarded by that. Now, people who said, oh, we think it's okay, it's this good value. Well, I'm sorry, you're not struggling, are you? You're not living hand to mouth. You're not living week to week, day to day or month to month, are you? You're probably okay with your pensions and you can probably withstand it. But you're not looking at the people that, what I call, the, uh, the canal community, the heart of the canal, the living and breathing heart of the canal, uh, people living on the canals, not people shining their brass mushrooms and coming and having a little holiday once a, once a week or once a month or whatever, is it? So I'm looking at those sort of people. They're the ones that are going to suffer. And now we've just had a licence fee, sorry, a mooring fee increase of just around 10%. So that's another £250 a year just to park on the water. Because that's the truth of it, okay? Now, including our storage box, it's only that little box, you'll have probably seen it. We're now just, I think it's just over three grand we have to pay for a tiddly little 45 footer. Now, you might think, well, that doesn't sound that bad. There's no facilities here at Gate Marina. There's nothing. There's a toilet and a shower. And all we get included in our mooring fees, as far as I can see, is water. Well, fresh water. Obviously, there's electric pylons, so there's a service there, but that's by electric cards. People may argue, oh, we've well, got a chandlery. Well, they're not running the chandlery for free. It's for profit. So, you know, that's for the good of them, not for us. So there is no facilities here. And I think what pees me off the most is that the shit year that we've just had to go through in, at this marina, okay? Now, let's just address what you can hear at the moment. You can hear the marina noise, can't you? I've just turned off the noise cancellation on the, on the software and on my microphone. And um, here's the decibel meter. I recorded this a minute ago, so just have a look at this. Right, the noise here at the marina, the ambient noise of the road. I've turned, I'll now turn off all my skullduggery stuff which keeps the noise reduction. Because I have to do that in Avalos, otherwise all you hear is that traffic, which you should now be able to hear. I've turned it off now, the noise reduction. And here's a decibel meter for the marina. The average we're getting is 71.9. The max today, well, while I was doing it for about 10 minutes, was 88.5. And uh, I paused it at the moment, that's why I was just sitting at 63.9, oh, 63.6. And that's just the ambient road temperature, pretty much and a car going past on the gravel here and of course I haven't recorded the bangs of the bridge but you'll uh, see that in a minute anyway let's go up the allotment and uh, do a comparison well I thought I'd come up the allotment for a noise comparison just to show you um, the huge difference now I've got a decimal decibel, decibel meter here so we'll just let it die down a bit. I'm sitting in the greenhouse of course, it's a little bit windy but the door's open so I think this is fairly comparative. But I will do it again out there and if it's any different then um, I'll let you know. So let's just let it die down a bit. So yeah, we're talking 30s aren't we? Mid 30s? up to high 30s, nothing really above that. I mean, there was a plane going over then as well, a little um, propeller plane. So yeah, so there you go. This is what I would call a, a nice sound level. So idyllic up here. You can still hear a bit of road noise in the background, but very little. Now, of course, now you've seen the comparison between the marina, which is just the ambient noise sitting outside and the noise at the um, allotment. Now the allotment is what I'd call idyllic and uh, the right kind of sound level. It's lovely up there. Here, you haven't even heard that the actually, it actually peaks, I'm pretty sure it peaks around 90 decibels on here, uh, on this marina, when you hear the trains going, when the wind's in the direction it's in today. It's a shame I didn't catch it because it just went past. And of course, the bridge, that's the other issue which I'm going to address in a moment. When that bangs, 
if I put the microphone by that bridge, that'll hit 100 decibels. It really was like, it's honestly, it's like an explosion. So there you go. So that, that's dispelling the idea that this is some sort of lovely, peaceful marina and that there's fantastic facilities. There's not. There's absolutely not. Now, I hope this bit will make you understand that we can't just move. We ended up here. Lee still has to work in Luton. Because of everything that went on uh, with the, with the um, big con, yeah, with the old hoo-hoos and all this nonsense, Lee lost her salon, but she, most of her clients are still in Luton. So we can't move further north for a cheaper marina because she would have to travel into Luton. She can't, I mean, we're in our 50s. She can't start all over again, 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 if you know what I mean. Now, I work for a, mainly for a company in Northampton. So it's handy to be here, okay? So it's not that easy to just move, is it? And, you know, so, and plus, where would we find as good a mooring spot as this? You know, being honest, that's the plus point. I do love it here, don't get me wrong. But I kind of think now they're taking the piss with the 10% um, increase. Now, so what have we had to put up with this year? Of course, there's the bridge. Right, I'm just going to cut to a little bit of video of what the bridge is doing presently, today, as of, what is it, February the 17th. So there's going to be a van go past in a minute as well actually so let's just hear, see if we can hear that beforehand and then see if you can hear it ambient in the background blessing me went over there so slow so you can do it and not make it bang too hard but no one's gonna very few people do that but anyway yeah so here's the footage of lee this morning going over the bridge it wasn't her it's her um, sister and her husband that went over the bridge so have a listen now me but move obviously more when i get to the other end of the bridge So obviously when people go over it faster, you hear that first bang like you just did there. And he's going quite slow. Now watch it lift. Now he went over that really slow. Now you think about people who go over that fast. That bangs three and four times really loud. So yeah, we've had to be put, we've put up with that now for, I don't know, five or six months. Okay, so this bridge has been broken for months, or oh, must be close to a year in all. What initially happened, or what they say initially happened, was cars keep crashing into it. I can tell you for a fact that's not what bent the bridge, because the bridge got bent, okay? What actually bent the bridge was one of their own employees and a client on one of the narrow boats, on one of the higher boats. I saw it happen. I've never seen a boat hit a bridge so hard. That's what walked the bridge finally and finished it off. Now, because it was so warped, they couldn't even manually open and close the bridge. So the bridge had to be kept in the open for boats position, meaning that from where we are in the marina now, we can't get down to the rubbish and the main office and all that sort of stuff. So, and what they did, sorry, let me just take a slurp. And what they did, they just left that for a while and uh, we had to go round. I'll explain all that in a minute. But um, to try and get it to open, what was doing, it was, it was not actually turning all the way because it was hitting, because it was bent, it was hitting whatever the platform beneath the bridge is, which was actually big pieces of wood. Now, of course, they sanded them off, didn't they? to be able to open the bridge and yes that's happened so again they still left it in the open for boats position but at least they could every now and again swing it close I don't really know what the issue was then I believe it was just before we went on holiday in June or July end of June early July that the bridge was taken away to be re-straightened okay so now there was no access at all from here down to the main entrance or to the rubbish or anything else now, the difficult part of that was actually taking our rubbish away. They allowed us out of the back gate, but they left that gate open all the time. So we had to go, and I'm going to just show you the journey now in the car to give you an idea. You know, if you were to take your rubbish down there, you'd either be walking or you'd be going in the car. So here's the route. Right, I'm coming around this way just so I can show you the route we would have to take either in the car or on foot. 
to take our rubbish down once you know when it was all closed off so just here is where we would come out of the marina back gate and we'd have to walk along this country lane or drive along this country lane with all our rubbish bags or if we wanted to go and have a poo in their toilet or have a shower this is how we had to get to it for the last well I don't know eight months still the same well it's not the same now sorry because the bridge is being kept in the open position so yeah it's quite a trek with with a couple of rubbish bags isn't it let's be honest um, especially on foot and not everyone wants to take their car and put rubbish in their car because you know it does stink let's be honest I had two bags that split on me in the car and I've had to wash my passenger seat so there you go the bins now then, as you just heard, I'm saying that I had a couple of split bags in the car and, and that's disgusting. What they should have done, and again, I reiterate, they should have put a couple of skips up here. They didn't. Then we had the security concerns. Because the gates were open, people were just coming in. The back gates were never open. They were always normally closed. But because they had to leave them open to allow us to come to this side because we couldn't come across the bridge, every Tom, Dick and Harry was coming here. And it was left to me one night, or one day, a couple come down here, um, and they just got their picnics out and were sitting outside our boat. And it was not for a while that I sussed out who they were, that they were nothing to do with the marina. So we were, and there's been, there was things stolen, not by them, but there was other instances of things being stolen. And so the, um, the um, security was awful. So I went down and addressed that because I was scared to go on holiday because thinking, well, my boat's being left. Whose insurance is going to cover that? This is supposed to be a secure marina and it wasn't secure. So... Of course, that was irritating. And now we're in the position where the bridge is left open to traffic now, so you have to phone to be allowed out of the marina, which I think is ridiculous, OK? This should have been fixed. With the bridge in that position, the reason it's banging is because of them taking away that slab of wood underneath one end of it, OK? And, of course, haven't replaced it. And all that's happening now is because the bridge is just going bang, 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 it is now going to bow like a banana. Because we've noticed a difference. When they first reinstalled it, you get one bang. Now, if a car go, goes over it at what I would say is a normal speed, you'll get three or four bangs. And they're getting louder and louder and louder. And at half five in the morning, it starts. That's when the first people go to work here. It's not their fault, but the bangs, especially if you've got a heavier car, it's ridiculous. Now, I'm going to show you a few of the other bits that irritate me about the bridge, which I just think is ridiculous. And of course, we have this weird height restriction, what I don't really understand. It seems to have been done, in my view, obviously, it's my opinion, out of spite, because it makes no difference to weight going over this bridge, because height doesn't mean weight. Uh, normal transit vans can still get over there anyway, but with me and Lee in the Kashkai, we won't be able to put our camping roof box on and get under this. So I don't know how we're going to manage on camping season. I just don't know. We'll have to see. Now, maybe this is the um, biggest piss take of it all. This is the button for the bridge that doesn't work. It says, users of this bridge do so at their own risk. The company will not accept responsibility for any damage, accident or loss. Well, I'll tell you straight away now, that's bollocks. That's illegal. They cannot say that. That, that does not um, remove their liability for the bridge. Simple as that, and I think that's absolutely ridiculous. And it pisses me off, to be honest. So I think, overall, because of the, to be honest with you, a bit of distress and a bit of um, unease about the situation that's been here for the last, certainly eight months, with the back gate and all that sort of stuff and having to take our rubbish and not having access to go down there, it's been diabolical. And they've got the audacity to put a 10% rise on us. And there's no facilities, as I've said already. I actually think it's disgusting, and I think it's, it's nothing more than greed. So yeah, I know everyone goes, oh, cost of living, this, cost of living. No, I, I never stand by this cost of living thing is, is phony. It's because we all, well, not we all, because we and Lee didn't, but because people got furlough. And because of this nonsense thing going on in Ukraine, which there's a lot more to, I'm telling you. I'm not going to go too much into that on this one, because this really is about the rising costs for boaters. So now we're at that point where our bills for a 45-foot boat, we're talking about the marina fees, 
the license fee and our insurance we're talking about four and a half to five grand before we even start the engine that's a lot you know that's a lot so yeah and as i say people who are struggling you know we're not rich at all and i say you know we got devastated by everything and i know a lot of other people did a lot of people living hand to mouth month to month week to week as i've said they're going to find it hard and i just think the whole thing is greed i know there's people saying oh well it ain't crt's fault it was the tories and all this lot don't for one minute think that labor would have not taken away the charity or the government funding because they would they're all as bad as each other and then, of course, we're having the attack on us now. They're talking about no red diesel, which is an EU directive, by the way. I thought we were supposed to have left that. So I can see that coming in. And now, more recently, we're hearing this nonsense that if your boat smokes, or, you know, if you're burning stuff that smokes anywhere, you'll be fined. And you think, well, we're not being funny. When we put coal on the fire, and we use smokeless, uh, yeah, smokeless, it still smokes. <laughs> it still smokes. It's full of bloody cement anyway. So yeah, so there's my little story about how we got here and what we're having to put up with. And the bridge is still broken. A closing note, I don't know whether I mentioned it in a vlog before, is that the back gates, we used to know the combination number for it. Now they won't give us the combination. So what happens if I have a heart attack and I can't get out? An ambulance can't get across the bridge because of that stupid height restriction. Right, it probably wouldn't anyway. It's got a locked front door here anyway, with a stupid waterways lock. And on the back, they've got a combination that no one knows a combination for. So we'd have to somehow phone someone at the marina in the middle of the night or whatever it is, ask them to give us the number to the thingy, let them in. It's not good, is it? It's not good. So that part of it, I think, is wrong. But then now what I've seen, I've, I'm only, this is hearsay, I haven't actually read it myself. Well, it is happening. Um, it sounds like there's been planning permission to move the gate at the back because there was always a problem getting onto the main road out there. That was the danger. So if they move it in 10, you know, five or 10 metres, then it, when, if you do have to use the back gate, you can actually get your car off the road, so to speak. So it sounds like they put planning permission in for that. Now, I wonder, this is the bit that I'm just, just my opinion or my thoughts. I do wonder now, if they're getting that pulled in because they're never going to repair that bridge and what they're going to do is they're going to leave it, they're going to change the way it is and leave it open to boats. I wonder if that's what the plan is. So there you go. Let me know what you think about it all below. What are your experiences if you're on a narrow boat? What are your experiences with it all? What, are you able to afford all this? Are you a, a mushroom polisher that don't really care how much it costs because you're doing all right, Jack? Or are you struggling? Uh, uh, it's... I find it, I mean, me and Lee will survive, but we won't be able to survive this if it go, if this happens every year for the next four or five years, we'll be priced over. I don't know what will happen to us. We're in our fifties for fuck's sake. We can't do a lot more. We can't, you know, what can we do? There you go. If you liked that one, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and all that nonsense. We need the um, subscription. We're getting up, I don't know, we're 900 and something now. Be nice to get that over the thousand soon. So anyway, yeah. So this that is a bonus little um, vlog for you all. I'll speak to you later. Bye.